Billy. Good to see you. Bye. All right. Thanks for having me on your show. I appreciate it. My pleasure, Kelly. How are you today? Really good. Really, it's a good day. Thank you. Wonderful, Kelly. Wonderful. So, Kelly, last Friday, you put up your album, Constellation. So, would you like to tell me a bit about the songwriting and production behind this new album? Yeah, okay. Well, my name is Kelly Deco, and I have a, a new uh, album out. It's uh, produced by Val Garay. He's a five-time Grammy winner and 130 platinum record producer. And uh, I wrote all the songs and I've been a songwriter since I was a kid, about five years old. I used to pretend to be in a rock and roll band when I was a kid. And I had a backyard little bandstand and I just, you saw just imagine doing that. And then, you know, you grow up and you just don't stop. And maybe you're not smart enough to stop. I don't know, you just keep going. But anyways, um, I've written a lot of songs over the years. And I've had some success. I had the uh, No Reality it was a really interesting success in the 90s with the great director, um, Wayne White, who was involved with all the Pee Wee's Playhouse and did a great kooky, wonderful um, video that became popular. And uh, not too far after that, I got married and raised my son. And I thought, well, let's see what else is left in the gun and we'll see what we can do here. And so um, I wrote, uh, I started writing Constellation and uh, you know, I just, um, when I write, I write uh, the music first and I write it on an acoustic guitar. In fact, it looks like the one behind me over here, um, just a cheap uh, Fender F-15. But the one I write it on is autographed by B.B. King because through the years I met him. And so, and so now, you know, <laughs> it's a clunky guitar, but it, it, it is, ha does have that mojo built yeah. into it. And he wrote on it, stay with it. In other words, you know, keep, keep it going, you know, no matter what. And so I did. And so I wrote, I write the songs on the acoustic guitar, kind of using two, uh, like a two note melody. Uh, and so it ends up sounding very 70s anyway. It's like back rack. You think of the, dun, 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 it's melody, always melody. And, uh, and then I take the guitar version and, my, and plunk my guitar. I take that one because the BB King one doesn't leave the house anymore. <laughs> but I have a copy. That's the exact copy of it, uh, you know, $100 guitar or something. I don't know. Anyways. Um, I take it over there to my, the piano player I've been working with for 40 years. And his name's Paul Franks. And he runs it down on the piano. And he he overplays. Uh, uh, here, cheers, Star Wars. Coffee. Anyways, um, he overplays. Like he plays so much, just like uh, Jim Steinman for Meatloaf. He plays a lot. And so he's playing, and I'm running the guitar, the song down until we get it right and we just get it right maybe on an ipad or something and then that's it and so i thought well that's cool that song wow that really feels good that you know okay see you later and i kept doing that back and forth probably over the next two weeks or so and we have came up with 30 songs real quick um again i had all the, the things but when you run it in front of a, a classical pianist they bring so much into it yeah. they bring this big dramatic thing and uh, so we had the record and uh, uh, of course, I, um, a lot of writers like me write just the music. And then you wait for this the thing to come to you. And it does. The song comes to you, uh, you know, out of nowhere. It's about this, about that, or whatever. One of the songs is about an Edward Hopper painting called Automat Girl. And Automat is an Edward Hopper painting. And I envisioned, if you look at the painting, it's a young person. And I thought, look, it's a young person. And it's in the 20s, the beginning of the modern age. And so what I'm what I'm doing now is is um, like Victorian futuristic modern. Like that's that's my my thing now. OK, so, you know, where how far out there are spaceships and things like that, but yet set in back retro times where it's all would be different. I think there's a lot of anime. It's out like that kind of now. So that's what I'm doing. So anyways, yeah, we got this, uh, this you got the story, this girl, he's, she's sitting there, she's drinking coffee. And I really much, I really just described what she was doing. But then the idea behind it was more like a Bruce Springsteen meatloaf song where she's really going out on the town with her, with her lover and she's going to see the, the lights and she's going to live. And so I pumped all that into the song and it, and it works. And so it's a great little song. And uh, so things like that. And the other songs I wrote, um, Destination, I mean, all the songs are out now for a while. I couldn't talk about them because they weren't out yet. Destination Fascination is uh, the first track 
I kind of sets the record up because it's like it was the idea was going out to uh, you know a famous club, you know, uh, Pandora's box or something that you and I, it was way before that, you know, but it was when people would go out and, and it was a scene and you'd, you'd be a part of a scene and, and things were happening that were amazing and you, or it seemed amazing. And so that song took on the, that feeling. And uh, so, you know, uh, from very early when I was came to, when I came to LA, um, you know, I had a little test run, uh, Robert Stigwood gave us a little test run, so they say, and, uh, and from that, I made a great record. It was at United Western. It was, it was a short, you know, I think three or four, four songs. But anyways, I met up with the uh, manager for Buffalo Springfield then. And that was a, that whole gang was that Laurel Canyon thing we know of now. But I just fell into it. And so here I'm in the middle of this and they're going, oh my God, yeah, this, what you're doing is great. This is good. You know, we gotta, you gotta go and uh, stay with it or whatever, you know, maybe King's uh, words. And so I did. And so, you know, they helped me uh, a lot. They got me a job in the movie business. So I'm a scenic artist and I was an artist so I could do it. But someone still has to give you the, you know, the opportunity. So since then, I've been doing uh, scenic uh, artists uh, and uh, set designs uh, and music. And that was in the really, really early 80s. Uh, so anyways, these songs all came out and infused with the feeling of the 70s and the 60s and Laurel Canyon, because those people were right in front of me. And I was li literally around them. And, and then when we made this record, we had all these, I, I had all these ideas, they came to me, they did, it, it does happen. It's not just, oh, no, you know, I'm going to force it. They'll come to you when you're ready. And then all of a sudden, these songs about this and that, you're thinking, wow, look at that. That's really interesting. Uh, you know, where'd that come from? And, uh, and then you just do it. Uh, so um, when the, uh, when, when it came down to making the record, I thought, you know, this really needs to be rooted in the 70s or late 60s. And I thought, I kept thinking Andrew Gold. I kept thinking Linda Ronstadt. That, it, those songs are right in your face. And her early, uh, or the hit stuff, and the Andrew Gold uh, were just really rough rock, but super clear. It was, I don't know. And I kept thinking, well, this is what I want to do. How can I do this? And the producer that I was working with, and I've worked with for 40 years, uh, was in Nick Tembrook uh, uh, from Northern California. And uh, and we worked at the record plant studios up there quite a bit, and then down here in LA. And he said, you know, I'm working with, uh, you know, Val Garay, he invented that sound, just see if he'll do it. And then, and then he did. And that's where the whole thing really took off because he really delivered that sound. And it's like, I, you would think anyone could, you know, pick things and do this, but he, he just, it was in him, it's in his mind, it's it's who he is to make that sound. And, you know, he brought his own, he brought modules to put into the board. He brought the drums, the guitar. And I'm thinking, I would have never expected this. I mean, this is a guy, you go to his house and there's a record on every wall, you know, and, uh, and you know, and we've become good friends. He's a great guy, uh, you know, outside of all that. But I was, I was, I practically broke down, you know, in tears when I heard what he had done and how much he had brought to the record and i was always telling him, this is your record you, you know you did this record i don't know how you did it but thank you for doing it and uh, and sure the ideas might be mine and i wrote all the songs but i mean you know when you get someone like that it's remarkable and uh there yeah, there's a short verse that's a short version of the story but anyways really happy that it's out the songs are great um uh, yeah, there's some really interesting ones we didn't get to talk about because of uh uh, they weren't out yet. David Bowie's brain is really, I love it. Uh, this, you know, my influences were always, uh, you know, uh, of course, Meatloaf Bowie, Anthony Newley, uh, you know, Frank Sinatra, people who made their voices into interesting little kind of instrumentations for whatever reason or however. And uh, so I love that. And I try, you know, and, and then what happened when the making of this record kind of came around was uh, most of those people were gone. They're, you know, they're they're not in the picture anymore so i said what the heck this is grab it you know take what you want pick off the tree you know a little bit of this, a little of that and then but then if you're going to do it you know you better you better make it real it's got you know it's not really who you are it's not just a game that you're going to play or this game you know no, it's going to be real and so i learned to get it real and then it was really kind of painful it was interesting when you get to where it's real and you're, you're, you're singing on the same microphone that many famous people have you know james taylor whatever and you're you're in there thinking well how am I going to do this you know how I what am this you know nobody this is you know these people were legends and then you just push 
and then later on you break down because it's you know it's it's weird that you it's that you know it's part of what you're gonna maybe have to live long enough to reach that moment to reach out and stick it out there and uh be don't, don't be afraid to cry over it or shake or whatever it takes you know it gets to you deep and then and then later on i think it's because you did that that makes the song a little better than it would have been because you got so out there with it and you put everything you had into it and it was real and it was part of your life's experience somehow all these and all these songs are even though they seem uh, very interesting and about strange things to do and places to go and other planets and etc and life and uh, you know uh, they are very personal to me it's the most personal record i've ever made and I've heard people say that before. I never really knew what they meant by it because I think, well, how can this song about that be personal? And then you find out, well, the reason is because of this. It's actually about another thing. And then they're up there just giving it at all. And maybe this because they learned to do that giving it all thing. Maybe that's what makes it personal. Maybe that's why we love the great artists we all love. And and that's why when they perform, when you when you, know, you hear Todd Rudgren sitting up there on stage, you're, I mean, I would never want to go on stage with, with people like that who are just so good, you know. And there's so many of them because they've just got it and they're just going to go with it. But I know one thing: I'm going to go out and do this live, and uh, I'm going to make this uh, a thing, a show. And the whole and the intention was that all along, and it's going to be a good time. And I'm going to push it as far out there as I can and and live it and give everyone a good time uh, while we do. And and that was the intention all along of this record. You know, early on, I because of the people I knew, I was at a couple of parties early on, really early 80s with uh, uh, the Jimmy Webb was there, you know, different people, people, writers that I really, um, really uh, admired, you know, Lauren Nero, and people were just, now we all know the names. When you're a kid, you don't know anybody or anything. You're just thrown into a room and these are all people. I think when the party that I was at with Jimmy, I think Val Garay was there too. But Jimmy was and on the piano playing, you know, because that's what he does. And I think I, I, I had a few drinks or something. And then I, I remember getting on the piano, and I think I was playing chopsticks on the on the mm. top part of the piano. <laughs> Which Jimmy, yeah, he, was a good, he was luckily he didn't, anyways, <laughs> find offense in that. But he was a great, great, great guy. All those people of that skill level mm. are, are such. I'm, I idolize them so much, and so I did my best to throw everything I could onto the constellation record and that's the idea there's a constellation you know it's the idea of there is uh, patterns you know and for me they're retro patterns mythological uh patterns told by you know uh, uh you know uh, tellers of tales and 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 celestial stories and the story really is that the earth is moving through these things and as we move through these things we get to experience these things of in our lives and they look and if you look at them they can be a constellation each one can be in its own constellation and it's it's us moving not the stars and it changes our viewpoints and uh you know sometimes you we you see imaginary uh things and with this record i'm trying to take modern twists on the ancient figures we've seen in the sky and try to bring it into a little, little one step closer to wherever we are now and that was my intention i think i think i did it i don't know it's all it's going to be up to anyone everyone else but the record is designed to be listened to as a as a whole thing you know as you get, put the needle down so when the the actual vinyl comes out in next summer that'll be the fun time where people can actually put it down and say okay let's watch it. let's do this you know like people do uh, things like that people who get who have a good time having a fun with the intention of the record will get their chance but for now at least it's out i'm glad uh they uh chipster pr great people uh they put this thing everywhere there's a lot of great artists uh involved with that company and i'm certainly lucky to be one of them so uh, yeah i talked a lot here i much talker i'm not a, i don't want to leave you with nothing to <laughs> an awkward moment or something <laughs> maybe i'm just too nervous not to talk i don't know <laughs> so anything else i can help you with <laughs> so <laughs> kelly talking about the album 11 amazing songs beautifully written great work you took us all back to the 70s the late yes. 60s to the early 70s beautiful yep. music you took yeah. it all to that golden era of music. That's what I call the 70s, the golden era of it music. Is. Beautiful work. I agree. 
Yeah, thank, really, you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I really enjoyed each and every song from this album. Totally brilliant work from you. Thank you so much for all this. Oh, God bless you for saying that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, You've made my day. I really appreciate hearing that. Yeah, you know, um, tell everyone you know. <laughs> Play <laughs> it and enjoy it. And, you know, every there's little interesting things in every song. And it, if you, if you, you're, you know, when you get the, when you actually get the physical one, you can hold it, you can read the words and say, oh, well, what's all this about, you know? And, and it's all about interesting things. Like I said, uh, you know, it's us going through the earth, moving through uh, life and the constellations in life, whatever they might be, you know, I'm not here to judge it, but I'm here to, to make a little story at least about it. So thank you, you're very nice. I really appreciate you saying such nice things. So, thank you. And uh, in terms of you, how, how, what is your feeling? Do you feel completely satisfied with the work you have done in this album? I was very, um, like I said, I um, literally broke down and cried when I heard some of the, you know, hear, when you hear the crafting, you know, that's, that someone else has done. I mean, because listen, I mean, I write the songs and I play the acoustic guitar on, on all the tracks and then I... Uh, and then I, you know, go in the other room <laughs> and uh, we recorded the whole thing live as a group. So, you know, a lot of it, you rehearse it, rehearse it, but you get to hear it, but you never get to hear that. You know, you never get to hear an expert put it together the way Val Garay um, can do. And, and if you don't know him, and I didn't know him, and you don't expect anything like that. You don't expect the... Uh, uh, you know, the crafting of that sound. And, the, and like I said, I wanted that sound and I knew it in my head. And it was interesting to see it and hear it, I'm sorry. And then here you are, and then you hear the song and you're like, oh my, I can't believe that. And then, and then you, yeah, you really, it, it gets to you. It really got to, it still gets to me now. It's like, I can't, you know, when I listen to it, it's a break, makes you break down because that's, how does that happen? You can, I mean, you know, I've been doing this a long time and then all of a sudden that kind of a thing happens because I don't know, everything comes together. I don't know, you know, the constellation comes together. But uh, but yeah, thank you for saying that. I'm glad that you like how it sounds. I totally, uh, I am so glad how about how it sounds. It's intentional. It's a great sound. Um, it's very powerful. Uh, the drums sound great. All the parts, uh, uh, man, uh, it, you know, e even the, uh, the singers we got, uh, you know, were great. Um, so, uh, you know, the whole thing uh, um, is, came together in a remarkable way at every turn. Luck was there. And then later with, uh, like I said, with Chipter and all the other people, Yul Hahn is the man who did all the artwork. That man is one of the most famous album designers that ever lived. I mean, he's, if you look him up, it's, it's, I mean, he's done everybody, Led Zeppelin, you know, down to every, you know, artist uh, that you can imagine. Uh, it, and they're all remarkable looking. And, and I was lucky to, that, that he got a bar and he really likes the record too so i'm thinking that's great you know <laughs> someone of that stature you know thinking okay this is because he said yeah this is the same you're you're doing that what you're doing is that thing and that's what i wanted to do and so you know anyone can say that but when it happens it's like okay that's that's a miracle that you know that you really gets into there and you're and now you're in that and now i'm in that and now that's the place where it's going to be and i'm that's yeah i'm i'm amazed and and like I say, if I talk too much about it, I'll, you know, start becoming a bawling baby or something over it. But, you know, I'm, it's okay. At least it's honest. You know, the honesty of it really comes through, too. So uh, thanks for asking that. Yeah, there's so many great people involved. I mean, uh, you can go on about that. Um, yeah, the uh, the luck that happened in every uh, part was uh, shocking. So uh, there you go. <laughs> I'm Kelly Decula. I got that record called Constellation. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, please listen to it. I think you'll like it. <laughs> I think people will never stop listening to this new album. It's totally mind blowing. As I said, it's really amazing. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You're so nice. <laughs> and last Friday, the day of the release, did you do something special on that day? Well, you know, I went and um, I'm not the kind of person who goes out into the scene like that because I'm a kind of pulls back. So um, I went home and uh, I went with my fiance and we had a couple of martinis and just was happy that the universe gave us something that was that you know amazing and uh, we sat there and waited just want, for a moment to feel it and uh, and then you know you can see that it's just going out and you can see that it's everywhere I mean there the 
people who are behind this are really um, thorough with their uh, with their approach to uh, to promoting it. So that was surprising too. So, uh, but yeah, when the uh, when we get the hard uh, the album, that's when we'll get everyone together and have a a big get together for that. But, uh, but still happy so happy that it's there happy that, it's, that you're there um happy that anyone has noticed it and then beyond that it's a great record which is yeah i can't begin to tell you how to do that i don't know you you know that's everyone else or or the uh the imaginary figures in the sky maybe they wanted it for them and they just got a hold of it and pulled pulled it out <laughs> we're gonna make this record go one way or the other <laughs> <laughs> and uh and you're really a nice nice man for bringing me onto your show and letting yeah. me talk about it and uh and enjoy, please enjoy it and if you do enjoy it you it, it, just know that it was intended exactly how you're getting it and uh for that 70s sound that 70s moment that you know run the whole thing i don't know if you can run it all together now i don't know how it works but if you can find a way to let it just let it sequence and just let it run and then feel the intention of where it's kind of supposed to take you. If you ever get it, if you can do that, I don't know. I I don't I, I, I don't know how everything works. It's funny. I'm a song maker, yeah. but I'm not a record, you know, builder, record thing, some of that. <laughs> That's just how it is. Everyone's got their thing. But very nice, very nice of you to have me here. I really appreciate it. I appreciate Chip Sierra and all your fans, all your show, everyone's out there. Get out there, listen to the record. I, I, I think you'll like it. I, I really do. I think it'll be something that you'll think this is great. I, and I'm so glad that it's there. And it's one more of the many, many, many great things you can listen to nowadays. It's a very, um, the world's, the art in the world seems to be coming up more. And uh, things that are retro and things that are, that really are somehow from wherever they're from are coming from those places. Yeah into the space of where the people are now. So uh, get a hold of this record. It's one of those. It, it, it won't let you down. Okay. I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, any plans for 2023 to be out on a tour? Yes. Uh, we have to wait till this record um, is actually physical. So they have to push, you know, they got to make the vinyl and all that. Yeah. So that'll be with Chipster. His company handles all that stuff. But uh, it's good to have people that, that that's what they do. It's, they wait for a timing to see, you know, what, where it is, how it is and where to go. So right now we get to see, it gets to go everywhere and we get to say, okay, look, it's over here. It's over here. Well, let's go there and go there and, and then play for those people and, and see if they like it, if they throw eggs or <laughs> potatoes or something. <laughs> now they'll love it. It's a good show. I'm a, I'm a good performer. I, 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 it's real for me. I'm 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 glad that, that that's part of what we're doing here. It's part of it's a show. It's a rock show. Absolutely, rock opera. It, it is that. It that's the intention all along. And uh, yeah, so uh, that'll be fun. It'll be a fun time. Yeah, um, you'll I'll right here. You can come with me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Kelly. Uh, uh, do you have any plans to come up with an official video from this album? Yeah, we we have quite a few, but when the record starts coming out, you have to decide what to do and what not to do. Mm -hmm. And it was important to not do it yet because it was important in the beginning just to get with Johannes and uh, and create what it is, create the thing, and then then support the thing that you created. So there, if you there are little clips of me miming, I think the songs on one on wherever the system works, uh, and uh, so those are there and pictures of me. But really, um, videos are are really a big part of it. I had talked with Johannes about making a video of the whole record mm -hmm. because in, in his style, like the record cover style, so it'd be kind of a anime interest, you know, interesting story you would go through. Uh, so the, there was a balance between, well, should we jump all the way to that or just do little small things here and there? And, uh, really the better thing would be to do the big whole record, you know, people could turn it on and let it play in the background somewhere at a party or something, or go and sit there and go on the experience as an experience. So 
that would be that's where the two ideas are and neither one of them i mean the drawings there's a few drawings but there's nothing really growing as far as people getting ready to to get a sound stage somewhere or start building things in the uh, uh, theater i mean a, a computer generated world there's a lot of some of the people involved in this project are really in way into meta so they've talked about whether we're gonna what we're gonna we might just go into that thing deeper you know so uh, so more of a 3d thing just instead of the word video it'd be more like that and the second experience uh, so uh, that'd be great uh, luckily we have people involved who that's what they do and and uh, they've been talking about that at first i didn't know what they were talking about then i realized wow that's what you're talking about like the whole you know world and places can be in different places yeah well some of the songs i've written are about that stuff so that's interesting that that it's actually a real thing right it's not like it's just some idea that's never going to happen so there there is so there is that so we'll see if uh if the people who are, are talking about that get ahead of the people who are you know, who can just get the camera and point it somewhere so interesting world you get you get things start coming up and you have to try to balance out what's going to happen yeah. or not happen meanwhile I just keep going have a good time keep going and uh, that's what i'm doing right now and uh yeah that's why i'm here with you talking and uh, I appreciate you asking, you asking me these questions. It puts it in front of me like, well, do I need to do that right now or, what, or next? <laughs> you know, you do have to decide. But, yeah. but when you, there's a chain of events really that has to happen, and there is like the cart and the horse, and I don't know which one is which, but there are two different things that have to kind of go in, in whatever direction you're doing. And uh, so the next things for sure are the, uh, are the CD and, the, and the, uh, the plastic, the album, you know, the actual thing you can put a needle on and listen to the whole thing and then probably wraps up probably it probably will go into the meta metaverse stuff i think that seems interesting to me that way you can you know sit there and go somewhere go to the places go to the constellation you know go take a what's one of the songs uh voyage to the silver sun take that take that song and listen to it you think what is what are you talking about <laughs> i like that one anyways uh live in the future be long and prosper. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. And you have to tell me about this song in particular, David Bowie's Brain. What is this song? Yeah. About? Yeah. Well, that's it's a great one. Um, it's one of the best melody driven songs on the record. It's just so, it's just right there in your face. So, um, okay. So, if you listen to the words, it's like, there's a he has there's a lot of fans of Bowie, and a lot of people know Bowie's story. And he wrote records for a lot of years before he had any hits, and kind of was more when he locked into the Anthony Newley kind of thing was when it kind of turned into more of a thing, and he kind of found you know all that world, and uh, so the song is about it's David Bowie's brain. It's like it's. It's about someone who's in there, in, in and but they're you're trying to figure out what this world is about that he's created, and you get lost in it. And it, even the song even says, I'm "Searching for someone lost in a role in David Bowie's brain." And then later on, I bring up instances where, like, he traveled across the country with Iggy Pop in the limo, and if you hear the song, you hear the words actually say here comes the fun now baby and it's like it's um in the song it says um it actually says jimmy limo in there and, and the words are david yeah so i actually bring and that's jimmy osterberg is is iggy pop it's the same guy so um so um yeah let me see what's the words um lucid dream in a dream are we going there too soon Will the change you have waited for come true? Do you remember the things we said that day? Here comes the fun now, Jimmy Limo. It's a fashion play. So I got into his mind as far as I could and put where I would be going with them if I was getting in the limo with them uh, in David Bowie's brain. So it's more like, 
I'm in, I'm in David Bowie's brain. I'm, you know, everyone is at some point. That's why you get it. I mean, maybe they'll have a song called Kelly Deco's Brain, and he'll just want to get in there and try to figure out what's going on in there. And, and that's the idea that you're in there. And they had that movie called Being John Malkovich, where people got to go into his brain and, <laughs> and spend some time in there and pop out in a field somewhere. So it was like that. It was like a kind of an interesting cookie experience about that. And the melody was is just really strong in that song. It's, it just goes right through. And the guitar is like, okay, this is great. And uh, yeah. And so, and then the song says, here comes the fun now, baby. Well, we all know Iggy Pop's one of his better records was Fun House. So you just sew it where you sew it, you know, you sew it together. And because <laughs> you know, when they come, like I said, when they come to you, they just come to you. You don't, you're not, you're not writing words for days. You're like, okay, here's the story. Here's my mind. Here's my, my mindset. And let's go. And then here, there's the words, there's a the story. So you, you do have to kind of know the story and know the people. You have to have done some research or lived. I used to get my hair cut with the same people that were, were cutting uh, 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 Iggy Pop. So uh, people used to laugh and say, you guys, you know, you don't Iggy. He's like, we're getting our hair cut. <laughs> we're hanging out. But he's a cool guy. And uh, so I always respected the fact that they had a lot of uh, interesting um, his ability, his writing ability is really great, brilliant. And, uh, and the way he puts things together. Um, when I was really, uh, when I was uh, uh, a lot younger, people said that I had, was similar, I was writing in a similar vein. That's fine, I, I don't know about that, but, but uh, they're all great people. And yes, it's me in David Bowie's brain. And I could probably write one about uh, a lot of people, because that's kind of what you have to do as an, a singer or an actor. You've got to put on the role, you know. You've got to play it, but you got to you got to know what to play it. And you you got to you know you can't fool people. <laughs> You've got to have the ability to do it. And, and like I said, I've been doing this since I was five years old in the backyard. Sooner or later, you're going to get it right, you know. <laughs> and that's what I would always I would tell anyone out there: just don't stop, keep doing what you do if you're doing this. Don't listen to anybody, just do your thing. Keep, just keep going, keep going, keep going. Of course, that isn't always easy because you have to pay your bills, but find a way, find a way to do it. For me, what I'm doing with all this music is, is the air that I breathe. It's, it's why I'm alive. And when, when these records come out, you, you feel more alive. You feel like you're a fish back in the ocean, swimming around, you know, alive, you know. And so that's a, that's real. And, uh, and I also would advise people to try to stay honest with what, you know, what, what they really think, what they really feel, uh, not, and try not to just follow everybody else because nobody really knows where they're going. <laughs> it's okay not to know where you're going. <laughs> Maybe you'll go somewhere really interesting if, if, if you just go. <laughs> yeah, so anyways, there's a little bit of story there, a little bit more than you probably wanted to know. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I can go on. I've, I've, I've met a lot of people. I've met a lot of artists, a lot of rock and roll people. Um, and most of them are very uh, just super talented people who are, uh, who are always just as nice as can be too. And, uh, you know, they live in a creative world. Why wouldn't they be nice, you know? <laughs> uh, and that's how I look at it. So they're nice. I'm glad to be amongst them. And uh, what else can I ask? Gonna answer it for you. <laughs> and, uh, are you planning to get back in the studio again next year? You know, I have uh, I have thirty more songs. I wrote actually wrote a lot of songs in this this group. We only picked these to record. Um, it was gonna be um, like uh, you know, do ten, 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 and the two, three, the ten at a time, and then. We just I, when when Val Garay got involved, he took over the project. So he, he we just did what he said at that point, <laughs> and rightly so. I mean, it was uh, great that so the rest are just on the back burner. But yeah, there's plenty of there's plenty of stuff waiting. I'm glad I was, and also since this record was made and you know and mixed and engineered and mastered and all that and. All the art came along and all that. Well, all, after all that, um, I was trying to decide what to do. So I, I started writing 
just a bunch of new stuff anyways really um really uh, avant-garde really uh, interesting uh, a lot of classical piano bits kind of mixed in so it was um so i'm going to try to pull all that together to do this again like one step more beyond <laughs> whatever that might mean you know more of um, prog prog rockish or something or just it probably won't sound that way in the end but you know where you mentally start one place it, it always ends up being you or whatever your your deal is it always you think you're going to go oh i'm going to go way over here and all of a sudden in the end it's it's still right back to this thing that you do whatever it is you do and uh, and uh I've learned that, I, so I've always learned to try to go way out as far as you can, because by the time you're done, it's not going to be that way out anymore. <laughs> so, so yes, I've gotten a few, uh, uh, two or three sides, I would say were 30, 30 or 40 songs uh, waiting, uh, deciding which one I do next, who knows. Uh, everyone was advising me to finish all this and run it down all the way, and then start on the next. But. Uh, uh, yeah, it feels good to make new music. And uh, it takes patience to stick with the one you made. So both of those things, I think, are really important to people who, if you want to be a musician or anything, a ballet dancer or painter, just stick with the ones. Uh, again, that's what B.B. Um, King uh, autographed onto my guitar. Stay with it, you know, which also means stay hip, but also here's the guitar, <laughs> keep, keep playing it. <laughs> or whatever it might be that you've got, keep doing it. Um, and you'll find a place, there's a place. Music is part of what makes the world work. It makes, uh, the world likes it. The, the, you know, the, the, the energy in the world likes music and it likes, especially likes music that tries to pull things together. And a lot of these songs have a lot of that. They called it sparkle. So there's a little bit of sparkle I heard in this record. <laughs> someone else described i think oh, that, that, that's fine it's intentional it's trying to make things a little better yeah sure why not i think i'd even say it in a couple of the songs why not why not do it why not make things a little better and uh, have a good time at the same time so yeah this is a pretty in-depth interview no one's asked me this many questions before so thank you i appreciate that <laughs> people have been really nice to me though in the interviews i've done so i'm, I'm happy about that there seems to be a a family of people out there who like this kind of stuff. So good to be a part of it. And uh, we're gonna keep going, keep doing it, keep going. And Constellation uh, is like a mirror. Yeah. <laughs> and Kelly, you were making a lot of shows back in the 80s. Around yep. the 80s. So do you have some memorable moments from that time that you want to share with me today? <laughs> Uh, you know, when I was playing, we back then, all the hair and all the, it was when I was getting my hair done with, and bumping into Iggy Pop. And I, yeah, I used to, uh, I was really fit and I didn't wear very much, didn't wear very much uh, clothing. <laughs> and so, but no one, it was the way back then, you know, and so you, you had to have that thing going and that had to have a lot of the moves and, and the scene in, uh, in Los Angeles. And those early 80s was just remarkable. I mean, there was every club just, you know, places that don't exist now. Uh, Gazari's, I think, was one. But of course, we all know a lot of the other places, but some of them don't exist. Of course, the whiskey's there, but but there were a ton of places people would play. You just play one, play the next. And lots of guys, good-looking guys, good-looking girls, going with the hair and going for the whole scene. It was very solid. It, it was... It, it, it was as big as I think it was the biggest scene as it might have been in the 60s. But the, but the people that I know who have helped me say, uh, uh, say no, that, that the 60s scene was really bigger, and especially Laurel Canyon, which is the people that that I'm that I know. And uh, yeah, but it was a fun time, really. Uh, <laughs> way, way interesting. Uh, of course, that was before AIDS, you know, and all that too, but it was a very wild time. And like I said, good looking guys and girls or everyone looked good because they're all, whatever they're doing, they're doing this thing, you know? And, uh, and uh, it seemed, it was, it wasn't really, it was a fun time. It was a fun, like the energy was, was fun. And uh, I had a great time being around all that. And, uh, and so, uh, yeah, yeah, thanks for asking. That's a, um, 
you know, Hollywood is so much is so much different now. I don't I don't know that it's good or bad, but I know it's a lot different. Um, I'll be venturing back into Hollywood to see what there is there. It's you know, it's all great big tall apartment buildings and and, uh, and but there seems to be some sort of scene. I'm sure if you find it, you know, um, there were a lot of big private parties back in the early 80s. I mean, people who were notable would have, you know, a big private event somewhere. And, and when you're in that scene and you're kind of moving up in the scene, you get invited to everything and you get to see pretty, pretty wild stuff out there. <laughs> yeah. Um, and luckily nothing, I didn't get hurt by any of it, <laughs> which is pretty cool. <laughs> but yeah, specifically a specific incident, I'd rather not go into just in case. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and post uh, touring in North America, do you have any plans to take the music to the international scene? Yes. I, I think I think overseas is, yeah, where I want to go. Yeah, uh, it, it's an international record, absolutely. I, in fact, yeah, that's probably the very next thing is making sure it gets overseas and make sure that that's where we push. Because uh, I feel there's that's where probably the biggest audience is. I don't know, if, but it, it sure feels something about. The, uh, in the past, I had received a lot of fan letters from overseas, and it's a solid, um, whatever kind of rock it is that I'm doing, this thing here is is solid in a lot of countries. And uh, because maybe the show part of the whole thing, uh, they, you know, they they really respect and get it or like it or, you know, they're, <laughs> they, they're living it or somehow and uh, yeah, I look forward to that. That's that's probably the biggest thing I'm looking forward to, is getting overseas and uh, and uh, doing it, doing it there. Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. Thank you for asking that. It's, uh, yeah, it's right on. Mm -hmm. Oh man, you, what would be the message that you want to give to the fans around the world? I would say um, this is a real record. This is a record about things that people feel and and uh, and also about um, you know things you'll go through and to uh, be happy you know a uh, um, couple of times in this in the mood in the song I'll say it's getting better all the time and you know I'm always positive about um, take the positive energy off of this record and and live in it live in a positive place live, you know there's there are some dark things out there, but they don't have to be, it doesn't have to be a dark world. And, 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 and I would stay away from anything that's, that's angry or dark because you can just be happy and live a cool world. And, and be, you know, there's so much of that you could do. Um, and I would say this record is intended to be positive and happy and intended to, you know, uh, to promote, um, uh, you know, it's getting better. All the time, like I say, all the time, and feeling better. You know, uh, you, you can. Uh, the song "Turn It On" has that message in it. The world, you know, it's now for real for you. You 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 can take it. You can. It, it, it the world isn't just an imaginary thing. You can stand in there and take the world and be a part of it. And uh, this record hints at that stuff and it hints at it in a very kind of abstract way because it says it takes the world it doesn't just mean the physical world it's talking about taking going places you know going way far off into other places and it's all there for you and uh, go with it be happy the long prosper all those things <laughs> <laughs> And uh, Kelly, I want to thank you so much for giving me today this wonderful opportunity to have you on this interview. Yeah. And it's a pleasure to meet you today. And thank you so much for the awesome music that you have given us this year. Great work. And 
brilliant thing that you have done so far. I totally thank you for all the everything, all the things that you have done for the musical industry. And we all love you. And thank you so much for the awesomeness. Wish you all the best in the coming days. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank all your fan, all your listeners. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a okay. great night. You too. Have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.